Defence Agency. The Correct. European Defence Agency, in my view, is a very positive thing. Um, I don't see why there is all this scaremongering in relation to it. The European Defence Agency is designed uh, to enhance and improve um, uh, the, the various armament agencies and the, the various uh, weaponry that's available to uh, uh, national defence forces who are participating under the EU umbrella. So, for example, um, the Irish mission to Chad, um, uh, which was under the EU umbrella, which is now reverted to a UN mandate. Um, that, it's about ensuring that our armies uh, can, can uh, uh, have the same uh, radio systems, the same uh, equipment, military equipment, um, and that it, it essentially that, um, it, 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 that they can work together and um, are safe uh, in, in participating in peacekeeping well, and peace enforcing and, and missions that's abroad. It, it? No, that's part it, of it. It's part it? of it. What well, ensuring that there's a greater bang for your buck, if, you, if, if for want of a better term, oh. where, <laughs> bang for your where, buck. where 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 uh, governments are investing in their military systems and ensuring that they get the best possible intelligence equipment, best po possible military equipment. At the moment, for example, we're entirely All reliant right. on NATO for how intelligence. About, about, how, I mean, do you think that's it, a viable situation? A we're anti-NATO, yet we're relying it, on them for intelligence? Right. It's, a, it's it, hypocrisy, Vincent. Right. That's what well, it is. Well, well, isn't a central point of the European Defence Agency to make the, Europe, to make the European armaments industry more effective, more competitive, to sell arms all over the world. That's the point. Well, the primary interest of the no, European it's not the Union it, uh, is to sell arms all over the so world to Saudi Arabia, to Israel, to African, to African countries, all over the, the world. That's the, the point. No, the primary, the primary what point is it of it. Doing the in primary European point of it. The primary point of it, uh, Vincent, is, is to supply uh, to, to EU wrong. member states. You're just wrong again. No. You didn't bother reading no. anything about it. But where does uh, it, 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 the Lisbon Treaty does it say that? Did you read the Lisbon Treaty? Because nowhere in the Lisbon Treaty does it say that. It's actually. The European Defence Agency is in the Lisbon Treaty. I mean, yeah. the, the European Defence Agency, for the first time, yeah. it is incorporated in the given very important just, just roles. Me, I just yeah. need to apply yeah. to a point. It, for the first time, it's incorporated in the, uh, in the institutional structure, would be incorporated in the institutional structure of the European Union. And if you look on the website of the European Defence Agency, you see what they're about. And it's essentially about making the European armaments industry more competitive. More, yes, more competitive, in, more efficient. In, yes. in, Where does it say about selling arms just, to just, Saudi Arabia just, or Iran just, just, on their just, websites? Just, just, That's just, nonsense. Just, You're making the, that up. In. That's false. I mean, it doesn't say that on the. It doesn't say it on their website. Well, it says it just, would you just that's wait that's until? But before you disagree with what I say, maybe it would be a good idea for you to listen to what I say, right? Yeah. Um, that uh, the the purpose of it is to give research grants uh, and to uh, to achieve. Uh, uh, synergies among the European defence uh, in the European armaments industry, which sell arms all over the world. It is the same as giving monies to a European car industry to sell cars all over the world or whatever. That's the point of it. But Vincent, are you suggesting that the Lisbon Treaty is going to result in a greater proliferation of arms around the world? No, I'm not. I'm saying well, that, that for the first time, the uh, that. The, the armaments and treat, the dogs of war are brought into the European institutional and structure. And that, and that the, we're told again and again the whole point of the European project was uh, a peaceful one to achieve peace between Germany and France and secure peace in Europe generally. And oh, then all of a sudden, uh, apropos of nothing, you have the European armaments industry getting a leg in and getting money, getting out. And by the way, this thing about Ar Ireland opting out is just not true. We, we will contribute through our contributions to the EU budget will, yeah. to the research for the European and so arms industry. And so we should. Can we get back to the, to, to the European absolutely. Yes. arms absolutely. industry? Absolutely. We should be, improve we should the capacity be... of, the, of the peacekeeping missions that we participate in. I mean, this is just nonsense to the say European that we should opt out of that. European arms industry is not about making sure that there's enough guns for peacekeepers. It's about making sure that we compete, that we, Make Europeans, money. are competing on the world stage for the money that is out there from third world dictators who want arms. Now, get back to the politics of this. Lucinda said there's no mandate. It's true that Libertas were rejected in the election. I mean, welcome that. But Joe Higgins was elected, and the, uh, in Dublin, the combined votes of the Sinn Féin, Joe Higgins, Patricia, the candidates who were on the no to Lisbon position, was a solid close to 30% of the electorate. So there is a, a strong and I think a more defined left critique of Lisbon out there now than there was previously. The other 11 you're right. seats, what about uh, the other yeah, no, you're, you're, right, you're right also in, in saying that the, the treaty is largely bureaucratic, but in as much as it contains... 
uh, elements that ad advance and codify principles about economics and about uh, military matters, they are largely negative developments. I really, and, and the declarations that have, that have been published today essentially is just the government saying, you know all that stuff that we said wasn't in the Lisbon Treaty? Well, it really wasn't. Our friends say it wasn't as well. Well, big deal. What we're talking about here is whether or not we, it's necessary for the Irish people to sign up for the creeping developments in the European Union that the people of Europe have had no say in. Okay, can I get... On at least one occasion, Eisenhower was heard to say by those in the room, God help this country when somebody sits at this desk who doesn't know as much about the military as I do. My fellow Americans, this evening I come to you with a message of leave taking and farewell and to share a few final thoughts with you, my countrymen. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes.